Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Views on the Continent, 24th of uh, November 2022. As a uh, Topic of discussion this afternoon, we are paying interest in uh, the Cameroon state budget of the year 2023 after the law uh, making body announced an increase in the price uh, of stamps for fiscal year 2023, detailing the fiscal stamps which in 20, uh, 2005 were still at 500 francs, rose to 1,000 francs in 2020, and now is set to rise to 1,500 francs as of January 2023, the announcement is accompanied by other changes like the dematerialization of the stamping documents, an increase to 4% of the transfer duty of the land title in case of sale, the property certificate which has risen to 25,000 francs, the judicial prenotation risen to 250 francs, 250,000 francs rather, and the import tax on rights which will move from 5 to 10%. The amendments of the 2023 finance bill, according to government, have been influenced by prevailing domestic socio-economic trends and recent developments on the international scene, among which the impact of the Russia-Ukraine conflict on customs revenue, reduction in budget support expected from the World Bank and the African Development Bank, bloated wage, which uh, bloated wage bill following the grievances of secondary school teachers and an anticipation of a health workers then added on to the upsurge in pay barrel or prices. These recurrent changes, according to government, are set to secure a state budget for the nation and curb inflation, whereas to the people, it simply comes to make life more miserable for them with critics wondering if these increases will equally come with an increase in wages for citizens of Cameroon. Dear to the viewers, this is Views on the Continent. Stay with us. Dear televiewers, it's a pleasure to always know you're tuned to Pan African Television and it's 3 p.m. local time, 14 hours GMT across the globe. And we are looking today at this take the, 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 the projected taxation increase in the country which is going to affect the population and the state in positive or negative ways. The, according to the government, uh, it's looking at increasing the st state budget by adding taxes and this has received a lot of backlash from the population of uh, Cameroon. Cameroonian citizens are complaining about this recurrent changes and increase of prices and the taxations at the time when uh, the people are still facing very difficult uh, moments uh, in uh, the cost of living with projections already seen. 2023 has been uh, a very difficult year following the, the, the inflation that has been hitting uh, the globe and Cameroon particularly since uh, 2021 uh, up to this moment. At this point in time, the government, uh, the, the lawmaking body of Cameroon has announced another increase in fiscal stamps which uh, left uh, in 2005 from 500 francs to uh, uh, 1,000 francs and now it is announced that as from January 2023, fiscal stamps will be at 1,500 francs. It should be noted this as stamps which go on most documents uh, that are, are done uh, or certified by most people on daily basis. It's going to be a huge uh, 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 a revenue uh, uh, system for the government. But what about the people living in Cameroon? Critics are equally wondering if these increases in taxation are also going to come with an increase in the salaries or wages of the citizens, which are really uh, not very encouraging. So looking at that this afternoon, we have on the panel an economist who's going to enlighten us so much more on this decision by the government the impact it's going to have on the state and on the people of Cameroon likewise we equally have a, a teacher and a civil society actor who equally 
will be giving us so much insight on the uh, repercussions of this decision by the government of Cameroon. As a topic of discussion, Cameroon State Budget 2023, impact of tax increase on population and states. It's a one-hour interactive program on your Pan-African television this afternoon. We will be glad to receive your comments on our Facebook uh, uh, live page streaming already. So tell us what you think about this topic of discussion. Wanting to unveil the guest on the panel, let's begin with he who is in the studio. You are Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, a civil society actor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rita Moto. Good afternoon to mm. all of you are so free media. It's been a while. Yeah, and it of is. Course, um, <laughs> coincidentally, I happened to join your panel today in a day when uh, Cameroon had uh, a very crucial and decisive match. Um, Good afternoon, equally to the football lovers of Cameroon <laughs> who have been maybe disappointed this afternoon by the show that the Indomitable Lions <laughs> put up in Qatar. <laughs> I hear some people say Qatar is catastrophic in people at this particular <laughs> point in time. But I think it was not, uh, even it's not our topic for today, but as a Cameroonian, I just want to think that. Uh, we have lost a match. We have not yet lost the competition. Of course. And of course, uh, I think those who, who watch the match and who are in the position to take decision should be copying their notes and learning to know <laughs> that rejected stones at one point Can will always the come corner the corner stone. <laughs> that is why the Embolo man who embolized Cameroon mm -hmm. is a Cameroonian. Home at one point, I want to think, just imagine a scenario where we had Mbappe from France, we had uh, an Onana from uh, from Belgium, we had a Mokoko from Germany, mm -hmm. and we had Mbolo from Be uh, from Switzerland, mm -hmm. who are all Cameroonians. <laughs> if the Cameroon government or those who manage the football affairs of Cameroon at one point in time thought it wise to line up these people as the attack line of Cameroon, just look at how disastrous the Cameroonian attack line, how dangerous it could be to other nations. Mm -hmm. So it is time Cameroon learns to keep their own and, and use their talent, valorize them in mm -hmm. Cameroon, mm -hmm. because what you don't val valorize in your home will, will be, be taken elsewhere out, yeah. and it will be valorized, and that's the same stone that shall be used against you. <laughs> that will happen to Cameroon today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, for your introductory statement on this edition of Views on the Continent. Let's equally uh, have Mr. Henri Kwam joining us uh, from the political capital of Cameroon. You are an economist. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Rita. It's good to be back. Um, hello to all your viewers, and um, I look forward to an ever interesting conversation. So thank you, Mr. Kwan, for being with us. Let's just get uh, this report talking, uh, mentioning on uh, this uh, decision by the lawmaking body of Cameroon. Then we'll come back to join our guest. While life is projected to be more expensive in Cameroon in 2023, an economist says government projecting to increase taxes. Life is going to be more, more, more expensive in 2023 simply because the government is uh, projecting to increase the taxes and this is not today. The, the government announces already during the uh, parliamentary session in, the, in July. Besides increased taxes, the government also plans to impose taxes on some activities initially exempted. Not only is going to increase the taxes but also uh, some activities what that were not um, you know, uh, imposed are going to be imposed as from, for instance, the fiscal stamps uh, as from as from 2023 will pass from 1,000 to 1,500, which is already a little bit more expensive. And then there are many other things that the prices are going to increase. And Where it pinches most, according to the expert, is the fact that these changes will have a direct impact on the common man. You will feel that in the market because when they increase the taxes, it simply, it simply means uh, traders, I mean, to, uh, they are going to increase the prices also. And you already know that we are facing a problem of uh, price increasing in the market, I mean, since uh, 20, uh, 2020. And so it's going to be more and more expensive as from 2023. The projected tax increase from the government of Cameroon will run from 2023 to 2025. The question that critics have been asking 
is if the government of Cameroon intends to enforce a commensurate salary increase and an increase in the living conditions of citizens after mobilizing the... Thank you very much, Director, for the technical comeback. So having to meet a guest from uh, uh, via video link, Mr. Henri Kouam, are you on seat? I am. Um, can okay. you see me better? It's, it's much better than earlier. Mr. Henri Kouam, this is an economic situation faced by people in Cameroon. Can you enlighten us more on uh, what uh, uh, pushes the government to take such uh, decisions? Does it think of its people or is it that it thinks so much of its people that's why it makes such decisions of increasing? taxes and uh, uh, prices of uh, fiscal stamps and uh, making life uh, kind of uh, a bit difficult. Can you enlighten us? Um, so, <clears throat> yes, thank you um, for, for that question. It's a really good question. But um, I want us to start from where the budget um, this year is situated. It's situated at close to 6,000 um, billion, um, which is a staggering sum, 6,259 billion. I think it's um, Article 68 um, for those of us who are reading. Um, now, um, the government hopes to increase its fiscal revenues from three, from about 3 trillion francs CFA to 3.7 trillion francs CFA. Now, what that means is um, we need to invest in schools and hospitals, and we, it's necessary for the government to take these steps if we are going to keep subsidizing patrol and subsidizing primary schools, etc. So in this budget, what the government sought to do was increase its, um, its fiscal, its revenues to increase the amount of money it makes directly from its citizens by... Um, First of all, increasing um, <clears throat> the stamp duties to 1,500. But I would like to note that the government increased taxes on a range of other products. Um, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, this um, import, imported rice is now at 10%. Mm -hmm. um, imported fish is now at 10%. Um, and there's 5% um, um, tax on metal. So there was a broad-based increase across a range of sections. And it is difficult for households now because you know, the war in Ukraine has caused everything from bread to flour to become much more expensive. And um, we still have the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic because we import huge amounts of foods from around the globe. So the disruption in ports and the closure of ports and other, um, and other um, institutions in various countries have deeply impacted consumers. Now, this has made life much more expensive for everyone. Mm -hmm. So this budget is um, this budget is coming to add to that pain, isn't it? Because households are already feeling the pain of higher inflation, which is situated around three or three point five percent, and this isn't helping with. Um, with um, oil prices which have equally risen and the government is having to take a significant hit because the government is subsidizing our patrol. And so this budget is a way for the government to begin rebalancing the books because the IMF, the World Bank and multilateral partners have been clear. Um, we cannot always rely on debt forgiveness. Um, we cannot always rely on postponing our debt. At a certain point, we have to look at the structural drivers of our economy and begin to think how and how on on strategic ways to reduce our debt. And um, the first way to do that is to increase our revenues. And um, and so that's what the government has sought to do. So yes, it's painful for households over the short term and over the medium term. But this would mean that the government can credibly spend without relying on a 200 million euro bond from um, from Europe or from or from another international investor. Okay, uh, Mr. Henri, thank you, Mr. Diwum. The Economist has said it. It's 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 a strategy beneficial to the state. It's painful, but it's a beneficial strategy as a civil society actor. How do you receive this decision? Exactly, that is that is where I wanted to 
underline the fact that uh, I don't want to go into the statistics. <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. not because we cannot go to to them, because each time I struggle to look at such statistics, it gives me gastric ulcer. <laughs> you know, I want to focus more on the impact of such taxes. Mm -hmm. Like you rightly said, in 2005, mm -hmm. a fiscal stamp was 500 francs. A postal stamp was, was 250. One or 200, yeah. No, it was 250. Okay. Then a communal stamp was 100 francs. Mm -hmm. okay. And at that time, our economy was instead buoyant mm -hmm. than what it is today. This is a fact. Yeah? It can mm -hmm. be checked. He's my, the my co can, is, can yes, confirm. He can attest. Mm -hmm. uh, you discover that. Uh, Despite the fact that the world is uh, going through some kind of unstable price situations or economic situations, mm -hmm. it is not an excuse for economists that used to drain their own citizens yesterday to hang on it and mm -hmm. drain them the more. And Cameroon government with the economy is one perfect example of, uh, of a government mm -hmm. that has for 40 years been draining its own citizens. You know, this is an example of a government that does not feel the pain of the citizens. But then, we, 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 there, there, there are certain nitty gritties that we should not neglect. What is the essence of a task? Mm -hmm. When we were doing economics, basic economics, mm -hmm. maybe at the advanced level, we were told that taxation is not a punishment to the citizen. Taxation is a tool, is a tool, okay, mm -hmm. to step up the government's revenue system so that in turn the citizens can be provided with the basic needs, sure. basic amenities. These basic amenities, we are talking here about schools, we are talking about electricity, we are talking about water, water. Mm -hmm. and to crown it all, we are talking about security. Mm -hmm. There is and also, also an economic uh, point of break even, where when insecurity comes in, the threat of insecurity mm -hmm. is capable of subduing all tax, I mean, all tax platforms. Mm -hmm. At this point, we all know, let's forget about Ukraine, let's forget about what is happening. Uh, we all know that at this point, the Cameroonian government needs money mm -hmm. more than you and I to fight the war in Norway and South West. Yeah. And to continue to fight the war with Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. Of course, wars that they will never win. What am I trying to say? The doomsday is hovering over us, the citizens. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at a commodity like the fiscal stamp being moved from 1,000 to 1,500 francs. You and I will feel the pain. The minister's daughter will not feel it. The minister's son will not feel it. Now, we are caught in a situation where the gap between the rich and the poor in Cameroon has further been widened. Mm -hmm. Okay? At a situation where the rich will become richer, richer. in this difficult moment, and the poor will become poorer again and the question again is year in year out we have been voting budget it is not the common citizen like you and i who are supposed to vote the budget the person we should be talking on on this platform now should be the national assembly home i think if my media out here for four or five years i have been saying it categorically i have shared platforms with MPs in this country. Backstage, they will tell you that the National Assembly serves Cameroon at nothing. But on TV sets, they will tell you that they question the minister. They did this. The National Assembly once more is telling Cameroonians that we are not there to represent Cameroonians. We are not there to control government action. Mm -hmm. We are there for government to control our action. We are there to look and to fight behind fires for our contract. If not, what explains the fact that the parliamentarians are there and they know what the already dying Cameroonians are going through mm -hmm. with the inflation and all or not. 
what is happening at such a bill will be accepted to go through. Mm -hmm. It simply gives us more reason to think that they have never been there for us. Unlike in other countries where the National Assembly is actually there, you know, <coughs> to control government action and then question how the last year's budget was used. Tell me one session in Cameroon where the National Assembly held a minister, a particular minister, that the bu your budget of last year, you have not presented how it was used. Let me just, before I give you back the microphone, let me mm -hmm. just quickly take a case where an ordinary Cameroonian can understand that our parliamentarians are stooges. They are figo hits. They have nothing to offer. Look at the route, Baba Juba Menda. Do you know that budget is being voted for that road every year? Have you ever heard in the parliament a parliamentarian stands up to question the Minister of Public Works? Look at Douala Yaoundé Auto Road that became Yaoundé Douala Auto Road. Have you ever heard a parliamentarian dare to question the Minister of Public Works? I mean, it comes back to say that I have been saying it and I will be repeating again this evening. Mm -hmm. There is a need, an urgent need, for the National Assembly of Cameroon to be dissolved. The Senate wiped off completely, just like there is a need for the Unity Palace in Cameroon to be adjusted. But I think for the National Assembly and the Senate, it is an urgent need for these two houses to be dissolved. Because the kind of, that parliamentarian city, they will not feel the pinch of this tax. Yeah. Imagine those who leave school at their young age needs to go in for concours. They need this fiscal stamp. Administrative documents need this fiscal stamp. You cannot drop a document at the SGO's office without a stamp. They know very well that this one targets even the poorest Cameroonian. The and poorest. The because poorest. We, we get to realize those who write uh, entrance examinations every year, they every must. month when they are, they, they are launched, they can launch an examination, 1,000 persons registered, just 15 places or 10 places are requested. For sure. So it affects everybody, and we get to see even the fees they have to pay to register the exams are about 15 to it 20 to 25,000. No, when you look at it... These citizens cannot afford, first of all, all of these, but mm -hmm. they have to go through thick and thin to be able to sit in for these exams just to hustle for end of the day, to be among the 10 selected at the end of the day they are not selected because their godfather died <laughs> then the person who is still having the godfather <laughs> whose godfather is assisting in the increment of mm -hmm, the taxes. this taxation price mm -hmm. this fiscal stamp price yeah will be there he will not feel the one the addition of the 500 he will neither he will Neither know will he feel the, 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 the three million that is officially known in some examination, in some concourse in Cameroon. So at the end of the day, we bear the blunt weight. We pay the price for what we have not bargained for. So actually, uh, Rita Moto, it is a terrible situation. And my problem is no longer with those who are duping Cameroonians mm -hmm. through the price increment. My problem is with the Cameroonians who have become so docile to a level where everything can be done and gone uncommented. Just imagine that the, the, the Momo tax came. Mm -hmm. Places were silent. The few of us who made noise everywhere, it never stopped them from enacting it. Yeah. And it came to pass. This one has come. Nobody will talk. In other countries, the citizens are the first leaders of the country. They will rise up. They will question certain things. But in Cameroon, I don't know to what level the Cameroonians have been zombified. Their brains have been neutralized to a level or to a point where they just sit and watch everything happen. I am afraid that we need a noir in this country. <laughs> because at this particular point, the few of us who are still putting our heads up we are already almost getting tired because the masses cry in silence and they never speak. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Mr. Ndiwum. Uh, Mr. Henri Kouam, 
now we're, we're looking at the government which says that this decision to to increase uh, 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 the the taxes or fiscal prices of fiscal stamps is intended to cover parts of the prices of essential products by 40 billion francs CFA, corresponding to 25 billion increase as part of efforts they say to curb inflation. Director, can we have Mr. Kwam on, on screen? Can you um? Can I comment? Yes, the government says uh, this decision is a strategy to curb inflation. As it says, uh, the, 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 the increase in taxes is going to raise some more funds uh, that they can that can be part of the prices to cover part of the prices of essential products by about 40 billion francs CFA. We know very well that it's not today that they started uh, carrying out increase in uh, in in uh, taxes or prices of fiscal stamps uh, however the people have still been crying about not being uh, uh, about uh, the non-existence of subsidies which were announced but they are not really carried out so the government now says this is another strategy to curb inflation which is already hitting cameroon hard so how do you think this is uh, going to be feasible so um, I think we need, to, we need to start from a point where Cameroon is in debt, and the government has always subsidized fuel. So one each litre of fuel is subsidized on average by 900 or 1,100. Now, this means that during the um, COVID-19 pandemic and after the war in Ukraine, the government had to step up um its efforts to subsidize fuel and to ensure that taxis cars buses trains and planes can run in the country so um by no means am i defending the decision but if the government doesn't increase the, the, the taxes its taxes through fiscal duties um how else is it going to pay for the fuel this means that one taxi trip wouldn't be 250. It would be at least 500 or 750. And I don't think we want that in any country. You see what happens in the Middle East when people get desperate. And um, I think the government is trying to prevent um, the cataclysm of um, unlikely events. So this tax is um, punitive. But before we criticize the government, we should ask ourselves how many people in Cameroon can credibly pay taxes? There are 10% of people in this country who are employed in the formal sector, 10% who work in transport, agriculture, um, you know, in banks, insurance companies, etc. So it's all about broadening the broadening our tax base. We'll get to have Mr. Kwam come mm -hmm. back with his connection. Yes. Okay, Mr. Kwam, are you back? All right, let me let's get to you, Mr. Andiwum, to continue on that. How does this decision to increase uh, uh, the taxes have, uh, play an important role in curbing inflation? <laughs> Part of Increasing our tax is already part of inflation, <laughs> except I've forgotten the definition of my, my inflation in economics some years back. That constitutes part of inflation. So you cannot ask, that, that question should not be coming from your return. Honestly speaking, add, the addition of that tax falls squarely in line with the inflation. Mm -hmm. Now it is left for the consumers who are the citizens to, to choose whether they will consume it or not. But unfortunately, it happens to be that kind of those goods mm -hmm. that they say you cannot do without. A mother in Aquaya may do without because she's already out of age. But this one is a tax that, that is a tax that targets mostly the youthful population. Meaning that since the youthful population carries the highest percentage of the population mm -hmm. they have no choice 
they must do with it. They cannot do without. So in the government has been helping us more mm -hmm. in the pull of inflation. Remember, I, I once said it, some people in Cameroon, I think, I don't know what, like I said, I don't, something wrong with Cameroonian. You know, people I see it as a surprise that today a cube of savon is 375 and the prices are not homogeneous. The heterogeneous nature of the prices makes it in such a way that there is a lot of price discrimination. And in that price discrimination, you can go to store A here mm -hmm. in Bonamusadi. They sell you a, a cube of savon, 350 francs. You go to, to, to shop B in Aquano, they sell it to you at 325. That's price discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because there is nothing like price homologation in Cameroon. Whereas we have a ministry of price control. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to see? Cameroonians are looking at it as if the price increment is a strange thing. No. The Cameroonian government took the first the lead. Mm -hmm. I will always come back to this. That the 2019 supposed AFCON that was supposed to take place in Cameroon a bag of cement at that time, there was no war in Ukraine. A bag of cement left 4,000 francs to 16,000 francs. A tip of sand went up to 700,000 francs. Mm -hmm. At that time, when some of us were crying, mm -hmm. because we foresaw that the government was preparing a fertile ground for inflation, people were saying that, oh, you people just go to TV every day, just criticize everything government does. Let's forget about the increment in the back of cement and the tip of sand and see if the government will deliver us with a, with a, with a stadia because we are in dire need of this stadia. Mm -hmm. We need them. We need the AFCON in Cameroon. Okay, we needed the AFCON. The AFCON came and passed. What followed the AFCON was the inflation. Mm -hmm. Because immediately after the AFCON, inflation started, started even with, before the war in Ukraine. That's what people are missing. Yeah. To capitalize and think today that inflation in Cameroon is linked directly or indirectly to the war in Ukraine will be dishonesty. This thing started immediately after the AFCON. What did you, Rita Moto, benefit from the AFCON? What did I, Emmanuel, benefit? What did my mother in Fundong benefit from AFCON? Nothing. Those who are up there, they continue to be the mosquito feeding on us who are down here. They continue to add their blood volume by biting on our flesh, increasing their blood volume, mm -hmm. whereas we are dying, we are wailing in penury every day. Of course, artificial penury mm -hmm. brought to us by those who are supposed to protect us. Because if truly taxes were to meet up the demands of the citizens, because the first uh, source of government revenue should be taxes. Mm -hmm. These taxes, the value of the, or the use of these taxes should be filled by the citizen through what I already enumerated a while ago. Mm -hmm. Now, when citizens cannot move from one town to another because the roads are bad, when they can go for three months with some quarters without electricity, when in some areas we don't have water, mm -hmm. which are basic needs that the government uh, is supposed to take top of interest top at the on, on the agenda mm -hmm. of the of the year when they are uh, making the budget what do you think are you not seeing that this government is more interested in extorting money from its citizen than using that money to satisfy its citizen it's a call for concern and it's sad it's sad eh? <laughs> it's really sad indeed because uh like, uh, my, 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 whether Henry asked a while ago, let's find out how many Cameroonians are paying their taxes. And I laugh, eh? I laugh. <laughs> whether they are paying the taxes or not, that's not the question. The question should be those who are paying the taxes, are they feeling the impact of those taxes that are being paid? That's the question. But I guess uh, they do, because even when I go to the market, be it at the supermarket, there are already taxes that are included in the, good, the prices of good. every good. You are coming at, back to what I'm saying. At the local, local, local level, level, question at the local level in the market, I usually see these guys pass with tickets yes. and say, "Pay your space tax." For go I saw. I met you the other day when I had to accompany my wife to the market, and at one point, 
uh, anger almost flooded at one area because a woman believed to have paid mm -hmm. and they came again playing tricks on mm -hmm. her that she should play to pay. So I think those this kind of question whether Cameroonians are paying taxes they are out of place because I think Cameroonian citizens are one of the most obedient citizens if not in the world mm -hmm. it should be in Africa. <laughs> they have a lot of coal that is they have opted to suffer and to be patient while waiting that maybe one day a Moses leaves them out of that suffering. Yet the government of Cameroon is doing everything possible to push these people to anger. Cameroonians are paying their taxes. I directly directly or indirectly. Yes, do. I pay my taxes. I pay my impose. And it, it's shocked because at one point, even when the police people stop you uh, uh, by the roadside, that's part of the taxi. Mm -hmm. You have to present the papers of your impose. You have to present your driver license. After presenting all of them, they will try to look at one for as they did to me the other day <laughs> to say no, mem un bia ifo no done. This I think we have to denounce them every day. But but the bia issue is not is it does not enter in the coffers of the state. It does not enter in the coffers of the state because the policeman knows that the state collects the taxes and embezzles the tax taxes. So me, the policeman, let me get my own from it where I'm standing. Share. Yes. <laughs> okay, Mr. Henry, come tell us. No, we are we are now uh, looking. We are now. Director, is he there? Okay, Mr. Henri Kwam is not back. Unfortunately, his connection seems to still be disturbing. So, okay, I'll still have to stay back with you, Mr. Ndiwu Emmanuel. But I'd like us to take a report, Director, if you are with us. I'd like us to take a, a report since we are talking about. Uh, uh, high cost of living and uh, uh, the impact of inflation on uh, the people, citizens of Cameroon. Let's get this report. While life is projected to be more expensive in Cameroon in 2023, an economist says government is projecting to increase taxes. Life is going to be more, more, more expensive in 2023 simply because the government is uh, projecting to increase the taxes and this is not today. The, the government announces already during the uh, parliamentary session in, the, in July. Beside increased taxes, the government also plans to impose taxes on some activities initially exempted not only is going to increase the taxes but also uh, some activities what that were not um, you know uh, imposed are going to be imposed as from for instance the fiscal stamps uh, as from as from 2023 will pass from 1000 to 1500 which is already a little bit more expensive and then there are many other things that the prices are going to increase and then where it pinches most according to the expert is the fact that these changes will have a direct impact on the common man. You will feel that in the market because when they increase the taxes, it simply, it simply means uh, traders, I mean, to, uh, they are going to increase the prices also. And you already know that we are facing a problem of uh, price increasing in the market, I mean, since uh, 20, uh, 2020. And so it's going to be more and more expensive as from 2023. The projected tax increase from the government of Cameroon will run from 2023 to 2025. The question that critics have been asking is if the government of Cameroon intends to enforce a commensurate salary increase and an increase in the living conditions of citizens after mobilizing the... This is Views on the Continent. Thanks for joining us back. As we are looking at the impact of tax increase on population and uh, the state we have been analyzing with our guests in the studio, the decision taken by the government, uh, the number of times it's been taken in the past years and uh, the, the, the effect, either the positive or the negative, that it has on the state and on the population or the citizens of the nation Cameroon. Now coming back to join Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, a civil society actor who's here in the studio with me. I would like to know equally, can we now see at this point in time that the people of Cameroon are currently paying uh, the price of the absence of policies and the absence of a visionary government? Structurally, yes. <laughs> Structurally, yes. And analytically. Is, analytically, the yes will be multiplied. <laughs> you know, 
There's no need to laugh at it. When you are, when a country is led by people who do not have any vision, the people make the citizens stateless. Mm -hmm. Cameroonians are almost stateless at this point. Stateless because if you ask an ordinary Cameroonian how the country is being governed in his day-to-day -day life, that citizen won't tell you. The bona fide lovers of the country who have tried as individuals to make some difference mm -hmm. have been muzzled down. Some have been muzzled out. Just imagine a situation where you have a tax department in the country, yet uh, anybody, anybody has a right mm -hmm. to decide the price of a commodity. I will, I will tell you something here that you will be shocked. I bought something from a shop two weeks ago brought it to my house a gas cover mm -hmm. a gas bottle cover it got back before two, before the two weeks <laughs> i took it back to the owner the owner did not know that i was the one who bought it and that i bought it from from her how come she told no she did not know so when i went i did not present i just told her that i bought this thing two weeks ago mm -hmm. and the thing got back she said no she'll give me the real one she remove exactly the same thing <laughs> i had her signature with me mm -hmm. i had not shown the signature when she removed the, the other one she told me that no the difference with this one is that this one is three five okay i earlier bought it for two thousand mm -hmm. and now say madam but i bought this thing here for two thousand a week and a half ago mm -hmm. how come she said no no no, no it's not the same quality you know, well, our friend, brothers and sisters are used to arrogance. So I had to remove the receipt. The receipt side proof, by her. yeah. She quietly sealed her lips. Gave me that thing for the very price. Which means that if we were in a country where... I'm coming back to your point of policy. Mm -hmm. In a country where policy works... And prices are homologated. And mm -hmm. prices are homologated. It starts from the top sure. to, the, to the bottom. Sure. And at this time... When there is the fear of the rule of law, nobody tampers with the policies of the state. Mm -hmm. So when a state does not work by policy, you discover that each department in that country has its own president. Even in a shop, you become the president of a shop. In a market, you become the president of the market. So you do what you want and you go scot free. It is just like coming back to still with the question of policy, we have in our constitution the famous article 66 mm -hmm. that when somebody is appointed in this country, he has to declare his assets before he takes office. Since the president is the first person who violated and has been violating that uh, that uh, article 66, mm -hmm. nobody has ever respected it. So now, how will you blame that woman in Kololo? How will you blame that woman in Mokolo in Yawundi who is only trying to survive? Who has seen in it an opportunity to suck excess profit from that poor citizen who is in dire need of a liter of oil mm -hmm. that could cost 1,000 but now is one eat? Lack of policy. And when there is lack of policy, the citizens pay a high price. Mm -hmm. That is the question we are asking. So that is why I say yes and a yes. Mm -hmm. The citizens of Cameroon are paying the, 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 the price yeah. for lack of policy and bad governance, we must say so. Because it is this lack of policy that has permitted that a minister can be on seat for 20 years. Only rotating in Yawundi. From the day he was appointed till the day he leaves that office and appointed to another office. Only in Yawundi no checks and balances so cameroonians are paying for lack of policy i mean mm -hmm. it's sad okay 
So it's equally reported that in uh, 2015, uh, Cameroon was at 5,000 million francs CFA of importation of food products, and in 2020, it passed to 1,700 billion francs. Does this uh, affirm arguments that the country isn't working enough towards empowering uh, agricultural domain, nor putting in place solid food policies? Do you know that we have a very fertile place in Fumba? Mm that produces one of the best tomato here in africa i always hear of that do you know that we have one of the best cocoa farms in the southwest region of cameroon in my village <laughs> uh, we have enough manpower mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they need only the support of the government then in times of war like ukraine Russia, we would have been providing them with food. What kills the Cameroon government is that they do not have priority. They don't know. They are struggling. But what sector is Cameroon even good at? Cameroon is good at no sector. If you go to the industrialization sector, Cameroon has not been empowering home industries. If you go to the agricultural sector, Cameroon has not been empowering those who are at the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, professionalizing universities in Cameroon, which is the current trend across the whole world and Africa in particular, where each country is struggling to make sure that their, their universities are being professionalized. Mm -hmm. Our own are being our own are being abandoned. Grass is shooting and growing very well in some university campuses in Cameroon. I always take the, the, the case of Ngaoundere University, where the Minister of Higher Education lied to Cameroonians that he was well equipped with all laboratories. When some of your colleagues, I don't want to, to mention the, the name of the house here, took their microphones up now, the rector ran away. Even all those who were involved in that university ran away, they refused to talk to the microphone. When some courageous students took to the microphone we saw but crashed in the campus that was a campus that we have been told that it was equipped with laboratories mm -hmm. so in essence cameroon has been failing that one is not a thing that we should be saying it again we already know that we are seated in a county where the government has been failing its citizens mm -hmm. but we have been trying to encourage them by pointing the pointing it out to them that i we think somewhere it has worked in this domain it has worked in this domain and if we can evaluate the strength of cameroon mm -hmm. to know that our strength falls in the domain of agriculture let the government harness its resources empower this sector so that this sector will be able because agriculture the agricultural sector in cameroon locally already employs a lot of cameroonians don't look at the case of cdc before it failed before it went down due to the, the, the effects of the war in Northwest and Southwest, it was the second largest uh, uh, em employer in Cameroon after the government. So the government of Cameroon has no priority. But if I also say that they have no priority, I'll be biased. Yeah, sure. At least they have priority in the domain of embezzlement and corruption. So for that reason, Cameroon government has a priority. And that priority is a wrong priority because it's a priority that does not boost the growth, the economic growth of the country. It's, an, it's a priority that has promoted capital flight to a point where almost the last Cameroonian, Cameroonian is suffering from the effect. Okay. So let's still stay with you this time around. We should get into uh, something that affects you per uh, uh, particularly. You are a teacher, be it af apart from being a civil society actor, you're a teacher. And one of the reasons for the increase in these taxes, uh, the government stated, was the bloating wage uh, bill following the grievances of secondary school teachers and an envisaged or an anticipated grievance from medical uh, health experts. So is it like it's, uh, the government is, go is going to look into your grievances by adding these taxes so as to raise funds to, to solve the issues that teachers and uh, medical uh, experts are having? Well, to start with, I don't think the, the non-payment of teachers in Cameroon was because the taxes were low. 
That's the first thing. I will recall that uh, the, may his soul be resting in peace. The person uh, who had the courage mm -hmm. to take the pen that slashed the salaries of teachers in Cameroon and maybe almost all civil servants and has never been reinstated with was uh, Simon Achidiachu. Mm. That's the only legacy he left behind. <laughs> and that legacy is dealing with people today. Now, to think that we must go through uh, tax increment to settle with the teachers' grievances is, is false. It's a false narrative. It's false because Cameroon government has money. They had money. It's just that, like I said a while ago, they don't have priority. If they, are, if they would have taken peace as a priority, dialogue as a priority, the money that they're using in North West and South West, they could have paid teachers and recruited more teachers for the next 25 years without shortage. Mm -hmm. The ammo cars you see littered in Bamenda and in Boya, they're not manufactured in Cameroon. They're imported, eh? And they're imported at a very... I don't know any garage in Cameroon. I don't even know whether those ammo cars... They're, they're, I don't know whether... When they get uh, break, break down, it is in Cameroon that they that, that, that are arranged. No, but come on, we, we, we have, we, 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 however, have good Anyway, it's my opinion. Automobile uh, it, engineers. It, it, it engages all of me. Cameroon, I, I know of many <laughs> anyway, ingenious automobile I'm engineers. I know a man I've not yet seen. I've not yet seen her. <laughs> so you see, it, it comes back to what I said. They don't have a priority. Mm -hmm. And to talk about our medic, medical personnel, it's also a false narrative because, first of all, we don't have the medical structures. If you see the kind of medical structures that in the 21st century we are they are, they are called hospitals in Cameroon, we need to be trying. Thank God, he has taken upon himself to be a doctor to all Cameroonians. Because in the first place, this thing we are talking about the medical call, the the, the doctor to patient rate in Cameroon is one of the worst in the entire Africa. One doctor, I was checking the other time, one, one doctor, doctor to 19 patient rate mm -hmm. is too much. Okay? Yeah. We would have thought that the money they already embezzled, if there was a way for the government to hold an emergency meeting, rally all the ministers so that all the money they have stolen can be brought back and injected to the, to the, to the government coffers. All these things will be, sort out, will be sorted out without any need of inflating the taxes again uh, 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 mm -hmm. Rita so we cannot in any way use this as an opportunity to lie that we want to solve the teachers uh, medical personnel problem mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's false it's a lie <laughs> okay so uh, rounding up on this uh, topic now of uh, uh, of discussion this day we are now uh, trying to see what better way uh, the people could uh, welcome these uh, amends or these changes because like you earlier said they are going to still. grumble <laughs> but they'll grumble and stay like you see and it's still going to come and pass like we had the, the two-way uh, mobile money tax fee it mm. came and it came to stay yes so and we've seen uh, the great percentage of interest that the government has made it has really inflated on the state budget. So let's now look. Uh, uh, by the time the people, this is already uh, enacted. In short, it will take effect by January 2023. How do you uh, 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 analyze the the, the 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 implementation of this and the reception by no, the no, people? No, 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 no. For the implementation, where we are sitting now, it is already even implemented in advance. Any law that affects the citizens in Cameroon negatively is implemented without delay. The only thing, if it was that um, we are talking about a decision that was signed by the Prime Minister or by the President that the Bamenda Babaju route must be completed before January, we would have been doubting the implementation. <laughs> but this one, that has to enrich the government and those who are there mm. to go far. No, don't, don't bother yourself about the implementation. What we should bother about should be the silence and the naivety of Cameroonians. Is it that the Cameroonians have not been schooled enough to know that citizens have the right to question a government? Even in dictatorial regimes elsewhere in the world, 
the population always have a time to rise. Just look at what the Ghanaians did the other day to, to, to uh, Nana Akufo, Akufo mm -hmm. Ado. Telling him to step down just because of increase in the prices of food. Yeah. I mean, it was it was really baffling because uh, yes, we've, we've I was in this same studio to uh, analyze this thing we are calling. never noticed uh, Ghanaians riots. Yes, that's why I use this platform to send a message to the Ghanaians. We have always known them as gentle people. Very gentle. Please don't disappoint us. It means that if they were in Cameroon, <laughs> God would have looked for a way to create another Cameroon. See, I am not like saying that what they were doing was so insignificant. That also gave a plus to a people whose eyes are open to see that their government is working. Contrary to Cameroon, they make their noise, they drink their beer, that is all. They go to sleep. They complain, they drink their beer. They call them. And one thing again baffling me, at one point when they said the beer tax was to be, the, 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 the beer price was to be increased. Increased. Social media was flooded. Yeah. And of course, the minister of trade came out there. Mm -hmm. He reacted that the price of beer should be maintained. It means that the government knows what they are using to neutralize the brains of Cameroonians so that they don't react. Yeah. Because so far as the price of beer remains 650, 700, mm -hmm. Cameroonians will not talk more. If that price is inflated and that, uh, like, that of and those of food and stamps, yes mm -hmm. they will speak <laughs> so but, all i can so, say so we see that even the citizens themselves have their own priorities because i i have a very strong belief uh, uh, that even if the prices of drinks were increased they no, wouldn't no. grumble no they wouldn't grumble they wouldn't grumble i remember it's in which year that uh, drinks were were increased it used to be 550 it went to 650 and they said if you raise it to a thousand we will still drink at that point in time i wondered but that comes what's back the, to what's the purpose citizenship objective or the goal of the citizens well we cannot blame the citizens more when you are in a confused system you yourself you become confused <laughs> we are dealing with a confused government so the citizens are not to be blamed with that okay so let's just take on this last part it's 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 always very good that uh, when we uh, criticize we should also say the good part of something so we know very well that with the, uh, the various changes that were carried out uh with regards to this fiscal stamp we remember that there was a dematerialization of the stamping documents and these we know very well reduced in a great deal the level of embezzlement and corruption at the level of these offices since they were no more uh, <laughs> having so much contact with uh, the money who told you that for a Cameroonian to embezzle he needs enough contact <laughs> he needs just a connection i know it goes with contact so you but you say that no it's I, it's still not like, not. no it's mm -hmm. a, a it's a welcome idea mm -hmm. but how far are we very sure that it will be effective when we all know that if Emmanuel Lebu could for about 10 or 12 years managing salaries managing director of salaries taking salaries of, of thousands of workers. people mm -hmm. and was not caught <laughs> how far are you sure that just this one will be clear what I'm saying is that uh, we can only educate Cameroonians to know that it is the right of the citizen mm -hmm. to question government action mm -hmm. and the earlier Cameroonians do that the better for them okay. because nobody will leave from another county to come and question your government but then I want to think that we are going uh, towards the end of the year uh, let the government they are going towards the end of the year let the government also think of how to you know reconcile with some of their errors talk to Cameroonians apologize for some of the uh, errors mm -hmm. they would have done throughout the year because this government in peace honestly speaking uh, it's a government the government is like uh, a wild animal that when it goes hungry it eats its own children <laughs> which is not a good man 
for a government in place. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, a civil society actor. And uh, equally, we had uh, uh, Mr. Henri Kwam, who unfortunately, uh, connection didn't permit him to finish the program with us. Uh, he's an economist who was uh, giving us some analytical uh, uh, angle of our explanation on this topic of discussion. Dear televiewers, uh, we've unfortunately come to the end of today's uh, edition of Views on the Continent. It was an interesting one. Thanks for staying tuned. Keep trusting your Pan-African television as rendezvous are right ahead in uh, French. And tomorrow, 11, 11.30 for press review, 3 p.m. local time for Views on the Continent. Have a wonderful day. Thank <music> you.